low to mid-range sector of the smartphone world got a big shakeup this week, ahead of yet another flagship level launch, this one apparently advertised like a science fiction action film. We'll talk about that, plus give you the roundup on reviews and rumors from the rousing to the ridiculous on episode 096 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once-a-week audio podcast where we discuss smartphones, wearables, tablets, and other gadgets you dreamed of owning when you were a kid. From somewhere between Boston, Massachusetts and New York City, I'm your host, Michael Fisher. Our executive officer today will be chief news editor and my personal real estate agent, Stephen Shank. Good afternoon. Uh, so are you going to bid on this house or what? Might because I'm Trek really up. itching for this commission here. I'm going to take uh, Adam Dowd's advice on that because he's joining us as well from the comfort of a Friday afternoon staycation, the ever thoughtful Windows Phone fan. Adam Dowd, how are you, brother? I am well. It's Friday, Friday. It's Gotta Friday get down night. on. And the no, mood no. is right. Yes. <laughs> Um, let's I think we reached equal levels of suckitude on our done. songs. No, I think we did well on that. So do you think, Adam, do you, would you live with me in the Star Trek house if I bought it? Because everyone on the entire internet is telling me about this house that, uh, <laughs> that I apparently need to live in. And I, I thought it was lame. Have you seen it? I would live with nobody else in a Star Trek house. <laughs> Thank you. I would kick out my wife and kids. Oh, jeez. So. See, that's nice. I Well, just because they wouldn't appreciate it. Right. No, they wouldn't. Nobody would appreciate it as deeply as, um, well, I think there's like maybe 12 people I know who would appreciate it as deeply as I do. And most of those people I know on the internet. But anyway, I don't, yes, everyone I don't know, I know about, about that Star Trek house in Florida. Yes. That Mickey living room, though. I don't know, man. I know <laughs> it's so, Florida and you're going to have to buy stuff. into it. But. <laughs> that is the problem, though. Yeah, you get the equal parts Florida weird along with your super Star Trek nerd. And, you know, the cover image they're using for that Star is not any fun. Like the, the bridge reproduction of the Enterprise D, that's always wonderful, but it's not a very good. Like the no, the, I mean you've seen these before. Some of these people yeah. just do like a, a bridge, but this is a little more encompassing. That's the thing. Like you leave the bridge, and the, the tactical panel has like iPads on it. I'm like, I don't care yeah. about that. No, we, nobody cares about that. But you go elsewhere in the house, to, and you, it's just the little details, like the ship models hanging from the walls, and so it's pretty intense. But anyway, thank you, Internet. Yes, I know about the Star Trek house, and thank you for all of your endless referrals. <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, it's so amazing. Um, we have to make some announcements today, and I think this is the biggest announcement section I've ever put together. I got confused looking at this. I mean, is this the news? I mean, there's like seven, eight of these. I know. Nine. And it's, so what sets announcements apart from, from the news categories is that this is stuff we've ostensibly already covered, or we're in the midst of covering it, and you listeners should be aware of the fact that we're covering it, and if you want to get more, you should tune in for more. So that that's the thing. And the reason it's so big this week, Stephen, is because we've been Crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, the very first thing. So let's kick it off with announcements. I don't know if there's a sound cue for this, but if there is, it's going to go right here. Announcements. Auga. <laughs> dive. Dive. We have one now. Are third-party battery-saving apps worth it? I like this one because this was a suggestion from me last week based on a piece of listener mail we received from Ganesh in India, who... Uh, wrote us a piece of podcast mail that I was saving for an episode that Joe Levi would be on. But for whatever reason, we didn't get to this piece of mail on the last show. So I was like, oh, hey, Joe, why don't you write an editorial about this? Basically, the question was, um, are battery-saving apps that are present in abundance in the Play Store, do they work as advertised or are they all bogus? So this, this actually sounds really – Did we, Stephen, you were here last week. Did we do this one last week? I don't know. I'm just looking at this now, and it seems like one of these stories, you know, the rule, if a headline ends in a question mark, the answer is no. <laughs> Yeah, Bedridge's Law, yes. Nah. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what Joe's conclusion is, but anyway, there's a whole – he's written an entire piece on this. It's really great, and uh, I know that because it's Joe, not because I've read the whole thing, because, you know, <laughs> hey, busy. But anyway, uh, Ganesh, we wanted to let you know that we did cover that. Joe Levi, the expert, handled that. And this is not in the rundown, but Joe Levi is on already on episode two of the um, – Pocket Now Power User. Yeah, I got RAM today. Yeah, we're talking about random access memory. Singular. Epic. Yeah, not not plural. This is not mm -hmm. a Daft Punk website, though sometimes I wish it could be. Uh, guess which smartphone took these photos is the second piece of announcement material we have. This time it's we're in volume four, and Taylor Martin has uh, whipped it together, whipped it up. Real good. Real yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> you must whip it. 
Uh, I cannot tell you, listeners, what device took these photos. Not because I don't know, because I do know, but because that's part of the game. Go and check out, I think he's got about 21 different photos on here uh, from a mystery device that you don't know. He's given you some clues as well, and already 80 people have guessed in the comments. And I will tell you that, as per usual, guys, what do you think? What's the, what's the uh, accuracy ratio so far? Well, some of them have to be with that many guesses. Of course, yeah. I'm not saying it's zero percent. There are some correct answers in there, yes. Um, I yeah. haven't looked over all the comments yet. I put in my own guess. You did? Um, what was yeah, your guess? I'm, I'm saying Nexus 5. I have no knowledge of this. Just all, all of our listeners, do not go by what I'm saying. I have no idea. I'm just guessing Nexus 5 just because I want to guess Nexus 5. And as you have no knowledge, I have no comment, sir. I am Fair doing enough. my hmm. very best to add no, no degree of clue-giving intonation or inflection to my response to you. I'm just talking too much. I just need to shut up. So anyway, Probably. go play. Yeah, pro- that's always the safe bet on a podcast. <laughs> shut your mouth. Uh, go guess, everyone. It's a fun game, and you're not really doing anything else. You're listening to the podcast. So, so do go, go, go click on that. It's in the rundown. Multitasking. Ooh. So Motorola invited us down to New York City a couple days ago. I was there with Adam Lane. We got some hands-on time with the new Moto E. Adam, Dowd, what device does the Moto E remind you of? Uh, well, I saw in your uh, comparison, you mentioned an <laughs> HP Veer. I'm not sure I see it, oh. but um, I mean, I mean, I guess maybe if it's open and doesn't have a keyboard. And... <laughs> no, I'm like, no, no, no. Okay, so no. If, it, if it's closed and you stick an air hose in the HP Veer and just kind of blow it up <laughs> by like 40%, that's what this thing looks like. Maybe, so maybe it, it just does more like the Pre-2, Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I'll go I, with that a little bit. Yeah, I could go with that. I'm telling you because when you look at the side of the the ridge, like you've got the um, the plastic, glossy plastic of the front of the thing mating with the dull back of the thing, and the um, the pre the first pre did that. So maybe it looks like a palm pre. Anyway, it uh, <laughs> it it looks like a Moto E above all. Really, it's it's if you took uh, listeners, if you took a Moto X and fattened it up, then you have a Moto G. If you took that same Moto G and put it in a compression chamber and, like, squeezed it down to about 75% of its original footprint. That's what the Moto E feels like. It's a little meatball. It feels great in the hand. I really like it. Some commenter... Guys, tell me if, if this commenter was right. Some commenter once said that everything feels good in the hand, according to us. <laughs> like, as though it's, like, the default thing when we don't know what to say and a hands-on. It's like, oh, you know, it feels good in the hand. I don't know. Hey, didn't we get called out on that a while back <laughs> and have think, to scale it down? I think we did, yeah. But mm-hmm. I'm not lying, though. It does feel good in the hand. Um, the E is certainly not the best looking thing i've ever laid eyes on but Ew. it's got the dimple it's got that I'm, swoop up top whatever i'm personally waiting for the device that feels mildly adequate in the hand yes <laughs> Ain't gonna that's what i'm holding on for. in the hand no um and then you, you of course you got these chrome strips up front which uh which nobody really likes and i i can't blame you the uh, bot- front firing speakerphone. Exactly, so. it is a front firing speakerphone. The earpiece does not overpower to give you stereo, though. It's just the bottom one is the speaker. Oh, uh, yeah. but, yeah, it's all right. It's still positioned properly. So my, my point in all this is that the hardware is not the problem with the Moto E necessarily, or the build is not, because it's right. got the water repellent nano coating. That's nice. Yes, the display is low res, and yes, it's got crappy side visibility, but it's actually not that bad looking if you're a fan yeah. of greenish whites. Uh, really, <laughs> yeah. the the issue here is that even though it's running stock KitKat, it uh, boy, it's slow. Not only is it slow, it, it you know stuff crashes. Like I tried to watch a YouTube video last night on a, embedded in a cracked article, and it just completely it wouldn't do it. And then it timed out after a minute and said YouTube isn't responding. You want to close it? Ooh. Yeah, I guess I have no choice. Huh. Then that today I'm in the middle of an SMS exchange in the Hangouts app, and. Um, my bottom row, like the home keys disappear, my notification shade disappear, and I've got full screen hangouts that won't respond. <laughs> awesome. And no home button and no <laughs> like Hope you like hangouts. Yeah, there was nothing <laughs> I could do. And so I had to restart it. So, you know, it's a Snapdragon two hundred um running KitKat, which is supposed to be less resource in- intensive, but you know, it's a Snapdragon two hundred. I don't know. I don't know if there's optimization issues. It's got a gig of RAM. It shouldn't really have a problem doing, you know, multitasking at least. Right, and I can run games. You know, it's, anyway. So the whole point is the um, we're we're reviewing this thing, and we've done a comparison with the Moto G, and you should check it out. You know, it's interesting. I had uh, two coworkers independently ask me right after the Moto E came out, "Should I get this?" Are you serious? And to, 
uh, uh, dead serious. And to both of them, I responded, spend the extra 50 bucks, guys. What are you doing? Like, are you having and, money troubles? What? Well, no, I'm just wondering is I'm just wondering if there's something about the hundred and twenty five dollar price point that's more compelling than the hundred and seventy five dollar price point or one hundred eighty, I guess, if you want to be technical. Yeah, it was one twenty nine and one seventy nine. OK, yeah. but I mean, I, I think just, there's. There's a desire just to get a good deal, regardless of yes. whether or not you actually need the phone. Like, um, was the other day, um, Michael, you mentioned that Amazon had that deal on, I think, the, um, on the, Lumia the 520. 520. Yeah, yeah like, oh, this 40 is 40 bucks or something. Yeah, super cheap. But I'm um, thinking about it. I don't really want this thing at all. I'm just really attracted to the savings. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, uh, I, I'm just wondering if maybe – I wonder if there's a magic number somewhere where if you can price a phone below this, you'll get a lot more interest. And Because, I mean, both of it, both of the – guys that I talked to when I said spend the extra 50 bucks they're like I don't know I'm just like really? Yeah. No, that, no that's true because uh, and I've talked about this on the show before and it was about the Lumia 520 when that thing first came down to 59 and it was at the Microsoft store we wanted one for a comparison with the Moto G. And so I was about to just go to the Microsoft store and buy one. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'll just go down the road and get one. And to Anton was like, no, ask Nokia for one. I'm like, oh, OK. And then I asked Nokia for one and they sent one for free, you know, as, as, they, as they do. And I got to say I was a little disappointed. <laughs> so isn't that weird? Like I wanted, I wanted to get the deal. Steven, I think yeah, you're right. exactly, exactly right. I, you know, I wanted to, to spend – to say I spent 50 bucks and I got a smartphone. Yeah. Um, so we are, by the way, in that same. <laughs> who's got a Who's got a soda gun in his apartment and <laughs> is filling me. a cup with it? Do you, That's me. What do you do? You, do you live at a bar? Like what? Do you, no, no, no. You have to understand this. <laughs> this Yeti microphone. I mean, this thing could hear a gopher fart from two two blocks away. <laughs> but is, is there not a mute button on your Yeti microphone? Well, yeah, there is a mute or button, but I'm pouring a cup that pop three feet away. It shouldn't be. Oh, this shouldn't be a problem. I'm sorry, it's a cup, of, a cup of pop. Yes, indeed. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I'm from Chicago, so we call it pop. But still, it's just it's three feet away. This should not be a problem. Give me some of your pop. <laughs> anyway, I'll, uh, fe I'll FedEx it to you. Thank you. I want to let you now. You want yeah, see? I have a coffee now. I want pop. And see now, when you pour that, I'm going to hear <laughs> it on my microphone. No, you know it's funny. Like when I drink polar seltzer on the podcast, you know because I'm burping the whole way through. <laughs> I'm drinking uh, uh, coffee this time. So anyway, what I was going to say was we have requested everyone a Lumia 525 from Nokia to compare with the Moto E because that is that's the adept comparison. That's what you want to do. We right. would do it with the 520 right now, but it's kind of unfair because the 520 is kind of yesterday's news. It is the uh, 512 meg RAM loadout, I think. Yeah. Whereas the 525 yeah. brings a gig of RAM. So you have a gig of RAM against a gig of RAM, Windows Phone against Android. Boom. Let's do it. So we'd like to do that. And with if Nokia gets back to us, I'll let you know. Or, uh, well, I, sorry, I guess if Microsoft gets back to us. Um, uh, yeah, it should take some getting used to. Yeah. Because uh. I'm not going to go buy that because the 525 is like 100 and it's like the same price as the Moto E, which is another reason it needs to be compared face to face. So, indeed, yeah. Anyway, we'll do that. Despite the fact that I am so burned out on comparisons, uh, that's so important that I would really like to do it. But in any case, the Moto E review will be coming uh, quite soon. And another mid ranger that we got our hands on. If you don't want to put up with a soft touch paint job and a phone that kind of looks like a compacted, you know. Um, V, whatever I called it before, <laughs> palm device, <laughs> a cross between the V and the G, is the I think quite beautiful HTC One Mini Two. We got to look at this one too. I don't remember when we got to look at this one, but we did, and it's this hands-on went up live this week too. Have you guys seen the video? What do you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> I have no strong opinions on I'm this I'm on the guy. podcast with the two biggest beat holders. Uh, so I'm just going yeah, to let this dead air ride for a minute. <laughs> Maybe Michael will just start ready. talking again. Yeah. <laughs> you understand, I have to take sips every now and then. So tell, Stephen, <laughs> tell me what your, what your thoughts are on this, uh, on this brushed aluminum wonder. Yeah, I'm just kind of a little let down by the whole thing. I, I'm not sure exactly why it's... Uh, I, maybe it's just the phone wasn't presented with much fanfare. HTC just kind of dumped it on us midweek. Oh, here you go. You know, without you know any big promotion about it. And I mean, it sounds fine on the hardware side. It's not – it's still not the, the dream of the shrunken down flagship. It takes a few sacrifices. It's got, what, a, a 400 a in 400, there? Yeah, the, the yeah. same thing as in the G, I think. I mean, the, the 720p screen, nice to have, but – 
Eh, it's just another mini phone. I mean, yeah, the only but, really standout thing is got that 13 megapixel camera, which I'm sure a lot of uh, one M8 owners are a little jealous about. Not to, and also the micro SD card slot up to 120 gigs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, on the face of it, the device itself is very beautiful. It's, so I mean, it's it's gorgeous. It's 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 just like the M8 in that particular aspect of it. So take that for what you will. I mean, if you if you don't mind having the downgraded specs, why would you want them? But moving on, um, it's just you know the the device itself is. I'm going to echo your point. It is beautiful. But uh, it's not small enough. Oh, it's so it's great though. So when yeah yeah when you know last year when the one mini came out uh, after the one. We all saw the pictures and, and we we're like, "Oh, what a ugh!" And honestly, it was I hated that um, that glossy plastic rim they put around it. You know, I, I think the first gen mini was was kind of a, a a misstep. But that now I'm looking at the one mini two, and uh, they've they've corrected that. the uh, The plastic is still present around the rim, but it's much thinner and it's matte finish instead of glossy, so it, it kind mm-hmm. of it looks pretty good. But yeah. also, um, it, it just it. The e one mini last year looked about to the same size as the m seven but it also felt much smaller in the hand. That is the same case with this I mean in photos it doesn't really come across, but you hold this thing in your hand and it is just it does feel substantially smaller. I will say that uh, I'm a little disappointed about the snapdragon four hundred myself the um but the, oh god, there's it, it's 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 gorgeous. I mean, when when the boxes came off of this thing, and I'm looking at them on the tabletop, I'm like, wow, I can't believe how much. I would rather carry this one because it also doesn't have that stupid duo camera uh, lens up top. You know, you prefer it over the M8. The hardware, yeah, I prefer over the M8. Yeah, I yeah. mean, just just the build, just because it is smaller, because it's more pocketable. It's I think it's a it is substantially lighter. I'm not. I don't have the spec sheet in front of me, but yeah, I'm holding it right now. So and what you're saying is right. you want exactly the phone I'm complaining we didn't get, which is just a shrunken down version of the the flagship. Uh, yes, but yeah. at the same time, I have not had occasion yet to test the camera versus the One M8. We're going to do that that whole comparison thing and all those reviews, all that stuff is coming uh, quite a bit later in the month, actually. So I'll be expecting your phone call. I uh, yes, you should. Oh right, Adam is in the comparison club now too. Yeah, yeah. Stephen's just like whatever. I don't know. They sound the same. <laughs> 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 Who are you? Uh, no, How did you get my number? What one of the weird things that HTC said uh, in our in our briefing was that the um, you know how the M7 was supposed to be seventy percent aluminum, the M8 was uh, is ninety percent according to HTC, and they're saying that this thing, the one the one mini two, is fifty percent aluminum. And I'm like, guys, that doesn't make any sense. Like, like I, the back is the same metal plate. The top and bottom, they're not faking it. The top and bottom are also metal. So, and it and it wraps around the sides. Like, there is no possible way there's that much of a difference in the exterior build, you know, in the materials ratio in the exterior build. So I think that was a bogus metric, and I don't. Maybe it's an alloy. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So if it's like it's an in. It looks the same, but it's an actually an, an inferior. It's like seventy percent aluminum. I don't know what alloys like, with aluminum. Like thirty percent, like no yeah, thing. like pot metal. Yeah. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> that fourteen carat aluminum. Yeah, that's a <laughs> solid point. See, I I don't know. I'm gonna have to ask about that. We'll no, see. I, I maybe it's aluminum that. plated. Maybe there's just less aluminum internally, frame wise. Is what they're talking about. I uh, it could. Be. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, this thing, the concerning point about this thing, and I knew there was something else that I wanted to talk about before we moved on, is that the, is the pricing. I mean, too high? Well, we don't know. We don't, we don't have official pricing uh, no. from HTC yet, even though it's It's going to be too high. I think that's safe to say. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, uh, the leaks we got from the, that Finnish retail site were something like 700 bucks. Jeez. <laughs> but those are just Yikes. leaks, right? And we, we don't have, I'm, I'm not convinced that HTC even has, decided on a price point yet but uh, well who knows but if it is in that neighborhood and you've got devices like the moto g which are very similarly specced selling for you know a quarter of that or, or less yeah oh it's gonna man. take more than a little bit of aluminum to uh, get you to pony up that dough right and that's the thing like i understand the whole point of bringing the flagship experience to a lower to the to the mid-tier range and for all i know the the m8 does that very well but it ain't Man, when when there's that kind of a price gulf, you've got to be coding this thing in 
something a little more fancy than aluminum, I think. <laughs> but we don't know the price yet, so I, I'm just uh, that's just speculative speaking there. But anyway, the One Mini 2 hands-on is up. Go check it out. Our photos are up uh, of the device as well. Whew. We're about, we're almost done with the announcements. God, All right. I need to take a sip. <laughs> only seven or eight more to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're only 24 minutes in. We got time. And speaking of high-end stuff, the, uh, I was about to say the Lumia, the Xperia Z2 from Sony. We have reviewed that thanks to our friends at GSM Nation. The purple phone, the purplest phone I've ever reviewed. Ah. I gave this thing quite a score. We need to revise our scoring metrics. I'm not saying the score is incorrect, but I had to play some stupid games to get this score the, the place I wanted it to. Because I knew I wanted it to be a point higher than the um, one M8. And okay. I, in, in, to do that, I had to make some ratios happen with hardware, software, and user experience that were annoying <laughs> and it was really irritating. You had and, to cook the books. And I didn't. And I specifically avoided cooking the books. I was like, man, <laughs> i got to look at all these reviews and make sure this is lining up properly. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, but at any rate, this device was scored very, very high, and it deserves every bit of that score. Taylor Martin has it right now. He's doing a comparison with the Lumia Icon. And uh, there's a Chinese wholesaler trying to sell company brand clothing in our comments, who I'm deleting. <laughs> he is gone. <laughs> Uh, and at some point in the future, I would like to combine the scored for me metrics with our actual scoring. But uh, ah. it's going to be part of a different overhaul. But is this, does this device incite any um, any desire in either of you gentlemen? Or are you are you just so oh, absolutely. crestfallen? Yeah? I love to some Sony phones. Well, they look really nice. I mean, I, I hear all these horrible things about reliability, hardware, you know, build quality problems. But they look really nice. Um, I'm a fan of Sony's UI. I, I like them. They're just not really presented for the U.S. audience, so we don't get really much of a chance to interact with them. That is the big shame right. about this entire situation. Yeah, it's like Sony has some really amazing stuff and seldom brings that amazing stuff to the U.S. in a big way. But, Stephen, I think after our conversation last podcast, I think we have some more verification now that this thing is probably coming to Verizon. Isn't that right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not buying it. You're still not buying I mean, like, I... Isn't, isn't everyone saying it at this point? There's been no new evidence. Hasn't there? <laughs> no, there's, there's been those two uh, official Sony renders that had the Verizon logo on it. And they're not popping up in the West at all. They're being on, like, the Slovakian Facebook page or the Korean website. And I don't know, man. I mean, they, they exist for a reason. I'm just not yet convinced it's because this phone is happening. All right. Yeah, four days. Make... I don't know if we were reporting on this, but four days ago, Android Central was saying uh, was was showing off some some. Yeah, it's that underwater photo yeah. of the guy holding the phone in the rain, and there's a Verizon logo on the back of it. Yep. It's like okay, all right. Mm. I don't know. What about you, Adam? Would you buy a Sony phone if uh, if you were shopping in the Android domain and they were available? That's a that's a lot of ifs, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very compelling piece of hardware, and it's um, it's just I'm not I'm not sold on the Sony software experience just yet, but I've never really haven't I haven't used it as a daily driver, so I, I've got that going against me. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean everything everything you know from what I've read, it looks like it's a very solid experience. It's weird that they're putting their app store next to the Google tray but i uh, I'd, get, I'd get over that that's <laughs> but, software is my number one complaint of course um yeah which is a shame because i actually like the experience the shell the the sony ui on um the tablets i think it's beautiful on the tablet and even on the z1 compact it actually wasn't that bad but they've they're just they're, they're i don't know why sony has decided to use samsung as the model for this where it's like wow they're getting away with a lot of crap on you know throwing a lot of bloat into their thing we're going to go ahead and do that even worse in some ways. Uh, well. Some commenters took issue with my assertion that it is worse than Samsung in some ways. Guess what? It is. Because Samsung's going the other direction and Sony's going the wrong direction. So that, that's the problem. Right. But, and there was a battery capacity issue, if I read correctly? Uh, on mine, but I'm apparently the only one in the world who's having that problem. Uh, okay. And it's not even a problem. It's just that the screen on time is about four and a half hours, which is right. normal. Yeah. But for a 3,400 milliamp hour battery. Right, you expect more. Yeah, I do. But right. Apparently everyone else is getting more, so I'm an idiot or something. I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. Maybe it, it could be because we're testing this model in the U.S. There could be a network compatibility thing. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, yeah, very true. How's the water uh, waterproofiness? Did you get a chance to test that without you killing break it? it yet? <laughs> I, see, I haven't broken it yet. No, no. It's, thankfully, it still survives. We're spending our last day with it now. Uh, I did test it at the bottom of a fountain. I got some really beautiful shots, I think, which I was really quite proud of in the video review. And that purple just glows underwater. It's it's uh. unbelievably cool looking. Uh, it handled itself very well underwater. The underwater photography is brilliant. Nice. nice. Oh, God, it does a good job underwater. Um, yeah, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful little device. Oh, and I think probably the most assertion, important assertion I made, this is like the me show. I wish that I weren't talking about me so much, but I'm almost done. Um, <laughs> the Android, uh, it is the best camera experience you can get on an Android phone, I think. Ah, okay. Taking everything into account. I'm not saying the photo quality is the best. I think the GS5 beats it a little bit. But the between the, the hardware button, the software load, the features... And the uh, stabilization in particular, mm -hmm. the Z2 is just, it's like the, I think it's like the icon, the Lumia icon of the Android world. And uh, we'll see if Taylor, we'll see which one Taylor crowns the winner when he's done with today's <laughs> comparison. I yeah, wonder okay. if it's really noticeably better than the Z1. I mean, we saw some leaks uh, earlier on that were trying to establish that the Z2's camera performance was significantly enhanced. And that's interesting because the hardware, I think, is almost identical between the two. Uh, I think the hardware is quite similar, yeah. So the Z1, of course, had that massive software problem when mm -hmm. it launched, and it had that, that digital noise that was just hilarious. It was mm -hmm. so bad. And, I, yeah, they did get around to fixing that, I think, at, at some point. But by that point, we were done with the Z1, and we had moved on, and we couldn't after the buzz it because I don't know why. One question I wanted to ask you. Um, you, uh, you mentioned in your review, you specifically mentioned in your review, the ability to launch a camera right from standby. Now, this is not the first phone to do this, but um, how fast is that? It's like two or three seconds. It, it takes a second to boot. It's not the fastest loading camera ever. I once I once recommended a Tony, and I should I should really recommend this again. But I would love to see a video comparing the startup times of cameras from standby. Uh, you know the various mechanisms for it, just to see which one does it fastest. I yeah. just I think that would be interesting. That's a good idea. You shoot me an email on that so that we can set it up before somebody who's listening to this podcast does it first. That's true. <laughs> I'm picturing the most interesting thing about this test is going to be the rig you need to build to tap all the screens simultaneously. Oh, all at once. Oh, I'm thinking like set a timer on each one. You know the thing you would use uh, to draw um, musical stabs on a chalkboard? Yeah, like oh, that, yeah, but with like fingertips. That. That's yeah. a good call. <laughs> I was thinking just a timer, but okay, whatever. Yeah, this is better. It's more fun. Um, let's see. I want to just briefly mention here that the Galaxy S5 has been reviewed yet again. Taylor Martin reviewed the Verizon version, calling it, and I rather like his headline, a safe bet with a side of dull. <laughs> <laughs> Even better is Taylor's, um, is Taylor's YouTube video. Great, per great performance. What's it called? Great performance, no personality. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, I, I have a friend of mine who uh, just had her uh, GS3 run over by a bus. Whoa. And so, yeah, so uh, she posted that on Facebook, and I said, I don't know, what, what are you going to replace it with? She said, probably the GS5. I said, well, that's arguably the probably one of the best, but one of the most boring flagship phones out there. So Zap. go for it. Have fun. Zap. Don't, well, don't, it is. Don't get some <laughs> hatred. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know that it's boring. I, I think that the industrial design is quite boring, but I don't think the device as a whole can be called boring. Every know. time I think about it, my heart rate goes up, which I can tell now because I put my finger over the camera. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, the <laughs> heart rate? <laughs> yes. Sorry, I got stuck. I went a long way to make that joke work, so just go with it. Uh, go, go with it. All right. Well, if you have an S5 or you're interested in an S5, but you would be more interested in it if it could charge wirelessly, uh, I know there's only a few of you out there, but I know you do exist. You're like me. You're, we are kindred spirits. You can get an accessory for it called the S5 PWR card or power card. Uh, which is a Qi-enabled accessory that you basically just stick onto the back of the phone under the battery cover. Nice. And it enables Qi wireless charging. Taylor did Wait. this. What? Wait a second. Isn't what? there an official wireless charging back for the GS5? Well, Samsung keeps promising it, but I think, isn't it late? Like like they all have been? Galaxy uh. S5. S5. I got to stop putting the space between S and 5. Galaxy S5 Qi wireless charging on Google says, so there's a couple um, products that promise it. There's the power card for Look here, Android Central. It's got a video of the thing in action. Samsung.com S5 charging S-View flip cover. Oh, God, it's awful. 
It, this is that one with the big old window in the front. Are we looking at the same thing? But they had just just a regular back one with no cover. Oh, okay, good. Well, then, yeah, I guess the official one is that. I don't know. Maybe it's more expensive. It probably is. How much did it cost? Uh, let's see. It's on Samsung's site for thirty buck. Thirty. That's still that's coming it? soon from the official. Yeah. Still coming soon. That's the thing. So what? What did uh, they must have gotten a pre-release one? I don't know. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, the, the I don't know. The point is that this one is cheap. It's from Clove is where we got it, and it's really easy to install. Like you take yeah. the back cover off, you slap this pad on the back of your phone, you plug in the port, and then you put the cover back on. What's this guy? That makes me happy. What's it going for? Twenty four ninety nine. Yeah, and yeah. it's a little cheaper. It makes me happy too. But two things that would really prevent me from probably going for it. One, it does give you a bulge on the back cover. Which is yeah, not, not no, fun. No. Yeah, deal breaker. Yeah, and two, that bulge means it may jeopardize the immersion resistance of the uh, oh. gasket because the gasket can't seat against the surface on the inside when this thing is in there. Right, right. <laughs> Happiness stolen. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna pay the extra five bucks for the official one. <laughs> yeah, big yeah. downer there. Um, but the install was cool. It was it was quick. It was a jiffy. And uh, as usual, the comments turned into a circus when people accused Taylor's exhaustion for uh, lack of enthusiasm just because it's a Samsung product. And yes, we're paid by everyone else but Samsung to hate Samsung products. So, Oh, all right. Uh, let's jump into the news because, guys, guess what? We're done with announcements. I was about to say we haven't yet. Half hour worth of the podcast and we're done with announcements. You can see uh, how busy it's been and we are grateful for all the busy. So... Thanks to everyone for reading everything. Let's say we cover a little bit of uh, iOS news. Stephen? Yeah, so remember that news about Apple snatching up Beats for a ridiculous sum of money? I vaguely recall that. Yeah, uh, and rumors are now saying that this deal might not be going through as uh, soon as we had initially thought. Um, mm. So Dr. Dre is going to have to wait to become the first billionaire hip-hop artist (laughs) because rumors are saying it was going to be confirmed this week and then that has not happened yet so something is holding this up or we haven't gotten official confirmation for some reason Um, maybe it's errant facebook videos well it doesn't sound like there's any deal breaker like apple may have no one's saying that this deal might be off it's just for whatever reason, has taken a while for them to own up to it. <laughs> I um, <laughs> I should tell you guys that uh, my a friend of the family is named Drew, and uh, for some reason, long ago, he, he picked up the nickname Doctor Dre because he's a doctor. So you know, there you go. So I mean, Doctor Drew is also a <laughs> he's you know, also celebrity yeah. we could go but, with. You know, there. it's not as fun though, right? So like, I'm gonna say he fell on the right side of that particular uh, nickname. So I, th- I think you're it. right. Yeah, and well, he sent an email to all of us when this news dropped. He said, imagine the joy I had when I woke up to the news that Dr. Dre is a billionaire. I was picking out yachts and expensive real estate. All this before 7 a.m. It's a good start to the day. Now, Remember the other Dr. Dre from UMTV Raps? Oh, no, is, no, I don't remember. There's more than one Dr. Dre? Um, I muted yeah. there because I was typing. Oh, okay. yeah. What was going on? Yeah. Was he the fat guy and Ed Lover? I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. This is an area of pop culture. You guys culture. don't watch I enough you have to be rap, seriously. Yeah, I know. I Where were you in the early 90s? Pick that up. I don't I'm know. not I sure, was, but I think we just lost a couple thousand listeners. I think I was reading <laughs> Deep Space Nine novels. I was <laughs> so uh, that's reportedly delayed after all the, the business. I, you know, so basically what this means is we're going to have a big trough here where we're not going to talk about it for a while. And then when it closes, we'll have all the same conversations again that we had a week ago. Yes. And uh, right. that'll be fun. All of them will start off with the word "why." Yeah, that's true. And I think some of the answers out there were pretty compelling that we covered last episode. Some of the um, yeah. theorized answers. So we'll have to wait and see. I, I don't want to talk about it much this week, but we just thought we'd thought we'd talk about why no one's talking about it this week, and it's because it's reportedly delayed. There's nothing to see here. <laughs> Move on. on. What if I were Stephen moving from the iPhone to another phone? Would I have a problem in that in that port? Yeah, maybe. Um, but this isn't exactly a new issue. So this is a problem we, that's been reported on and off for quite a while now, where there's something weird with the way that, I guess, text messages get routed through uh, iMessage. And so if you had, had everything set up with Apple, you've been getting everything through your iPhone, and then you, you know, move that number onto uh, an Android phone, something on a different platform, 
somewhere along the line, you know, when the internet pipes and all, things get confused and people aren't getting their messages coming through to their new phone. They, they're still trying to get sent to through iMessage and there's no easy solution. Um, and if you call Apple and complain enough, sometimes that helps. If you do all these elaborate things with moving SIMs back and forth and activating phones in the right order, maybe that will help. This is just one of those you know, weird bugs that have been around for ages and there's no clear sign of it getting better. This is like with uh, Andrew, I always have something where Gmail just, um, uh, email sits in my outbox for like an hour and just doesn't go off the phone. And it, yeah, I, reports of it are all over the internet. There's no obvious fix. You can fiddle with airplane mode all you want. You know, yeah. sometimes these things work, sometimes they don't. It's, I'm- Kind of looking at the comment thread now, and yeah, that's the overriding thing on on yeah. all of sites. All sites reporting this on this issue is that this isn't a new bug. Why is it new? Uh, apparently, it's only new because um, Adam Pash recently ran into this thing. I don't know if I'm pronouncing I mean, his I'm, name wrong. I mean, uh, every once in a while, sometimes we do need these bugs to gain a little publicity in the hopes that maybe the companies will finally do something about them. Yeah, and if you're having this problem, you should know that there are a couple solutions out there that um, that may work, and especially at the source link, if you visit Adam Pasha's blog, um, he's got uh, a, a list of, of sort of... But I think none of them work for him. <laughs> well, none of those work for him, but then he's he's got an update down at the bottom where he's, he's something worked for him in the, in the short term. Uh-huh. And uh, actually, in the comments on our own story, there's a couple uh, fix attempts you can try there. This, frankly, this isn't too big a surprise to me. I know it's not new, but you know, this is what you, what happens when you when you interject when you you know throw in a third party between the uh, hi dog, between the carrier and the uh, and and the, and the content. You know, it's like okay, the carrier's network is expecting to handle this through the short message service. But no, this is going to be an intermediary. And then when you switch away from that, you know, we've been having these problems um, on my – all my friends who try to talk to me on iMessage, like all those messages go to an iPad that I haven't turned on in about three months. So I don't know you – know, I never know what's going on. And they – if they're an older generation that doesn't necessarily know the difference, then they can't tell when it's an iMessage, when it's an SMS, and it's just a, kind of a big mess. Maybe the solution is just to give up SMS. What do you guys think? I guess voice call everyone. <laughs> this solution is just what I'm back saying. To, I've been saying that for years. Go back to landlines. Yeah. So anyway, just uh, wanted to mention that just in case you're running into a problem like that, there are some solutions that have been floated that seem to be giving some, giving some people some, uh, some respites from troubles. So anyway, moving into Android. I asked Stephen Schenk to look into this whole... Galaxy S5 Prime nonsense. What's up with that? What is up with it? See, this is my question. First of all, I'm, I've always been skeptical about this thing in terms of, um, it seems like, because it's not the only Prime out there. The HTC One M8 Prime or something is, is also being rumored by, and it seems to me that like Prime rumors are the places people go to when they're disappointed by the product that was, yeah. used, was officially announced, and that they're manufacturing something else out of whole cloth from their imaginations, yeah. I, I get a lot of the sense that this is something that we're developing because we—I don't think we have seen any smartphone arrive with a prime version after the, you know, the flagship launches. It's just we came up with this name somehow, and now we're attaching it to all these dreams of slightly upgraded hardware refreshes. Yeah. Uh, you know, is there any fact behind any of this? Well, I mean, the S Prime does look like it's happening, or at least something that's better than the GS5 is happening. Whether it's called that or not, who knows? And we know Samsung, you know, vehemently denied those rumors of there being a new version of the GS5. This may launch as something branded differently. We know with the uh, the Galaxy K, Samsung is not adverse to creating these weird not weird but unexpected brands out of nowhere so it might not be the prime but it looks like it's going to happen 2k display uh snapdragon 805 you know nice beefy specs it might have an aluminum or metal body and it could be here really soon uh, maybe not i mean we heard stuff last month talking about how it was still you know, not even a finalized design yet and now this month we're hearing it could launch as soon as june so i don't know how trustworthy that is i'd say by the end of summer that'd be likely but and the next I, couple of weeks maybe i may have missed this detail but we're getting this from the bluetooth certification is that right 
Ah, uh, no, that was just the latest place that popped up. Okay, all right. Yeah. We're also and we're also seeing the yeah the play edition there as well. It's like ah, there's a the play edition. Yeah. I think it's more interesting part of that rumor because we didn't have a model number for that before. Right, and the model number is lines up perfectly with the with last year's S four Google Play Edition model number, right? Yeah. So I mean, and we saw it on the um, you know on Google's listing of Google Play devices in last week or two weeks ago, where they had the thumbnail of the GS five or the GS four should have been. Right. So, it's, so this one feels like it's right about to happen. All right. Well, in the interim, the S5 hasn't been doing terribly poorly in its in its stock self. Yeah, it sold a few. <laughs> a couple. Now, I, I was really pleased to see that Rithvik answered the question that I had immediately when reading this headline. Uh, the headline's Galaxy S5 sales have reached 11 million units, says co-chief executive. And I immediately asked, well, how does that compare to last year's S4 sales? You know, because I want to know. You know, we, we have alternating reports of doom and gloom it's not doing as well and others like yeah it's doing fine well it seems to be the latter uh, the phone has sold more than 11 million units since going on sale in early april for comparison last year's flagship s4 sold around 10 million units in about the yeah, same time period. but didn't we have all these complaints last year that even though the gs4 was selling like hotcakes samsung was still a little dissatisfied with how well it was doing yeah and there were rumors right. that they were ramping up to release a, an early, right, to do an early heard, release yeah, so maybe five, yeah. maybe they would prefer to have 12 million sales. It's never good enough. That's the question, right? I mean, what's the what's the growth rate? I mean, that's not, you know, that that may as well be the same, 11 million units versus 10 million. So yeah, I mean, the market's yeah. bigger this year. Right, and if they were expecting to see more, if they were expecting to see a, you know, 50% growth or whatever, and you know, I don't know. That seems right. pretty extreme. I don't know. Adam, what are, you, what are your what are your just, thoughts? Just a little bit. I mean, it is a 10% increase. So I mean, it's not insignificant it's not great but i mean it's i mean maybe we've hit that you know now that the gs3 has been out and the gs4 has been out now it's the gs5 maybe we're starting to hit that plateau where people are starting to upgrade their older phones you know their gs3s with the gs5s and so and maybe more people are maybe samsung just did too good a job two years ago and they're like yeah Maybe I could just hold on to this GS3 for another year and see what the S6 brings. I'd, right. It could very well be. I mean, if you're going to go by those, you know, the two-year cycle, you know, the GS3 is still a – I mean, we, we've we said it as recent – I've seen it said as recently as a couple of weeks ago that the GS3 is still a solid offering, you know, in today's smartphone phone space. So maybe there's just not as enough incentive to upgrade except, you know, a heart sensor. That's pretty interesting. Well, no, I go by that thing. And the immersion, <laughs> no, but the immersion resistance. You know, there, there's, there's stuff here that you can use to sell this thing to ordinary people and not, you know, spec heads. Uh, certainly, I think some of the new commercials have been really interesting for the S5, where they're they're appealing more to the emotional side. We've thankfully put away last year's sort of smarmy, tongue-in-cheek digs at other platforms and the. Stupid office humor of things, uh, you know. Those. See, I like those kind of. Ads. I hate it. Yeah, it was, I couldn't stand them. They're like that S four flip cover commercial with the, like some of them just made no sense. It's like the punchline would land and the commercial would be over. I'm like, what? Wait, I, I didn't get the joke. <laughs> was, there was that a joke? For? Was that a joke? Because the music told me I should be expecting a joke, but no, it sucked. So no, this year's ads are way better. I think. I, I think they're more clear. They're simpler and they're better at appealing to at least my emotions. I don't know. Maybe I'm alone. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's no surprise to me, I guess, that the uh, S5 is off to a fairly strong start here. So, Yeah. Speaking of ads, the HTC One M8 has a new promo vid starring, once again, Gary Oldman. Back with more of the same, HTC. Oh, boy. I was guys. so confused when I watched this commercial. I want to have you. Yeah, tell me, Adam. Because he starts off with this, you know, with the metronome. Click, click, click. Yeah. You like this smartphone. Yeah. This is a great smartphone. Then he turns around and says, you don't have to hypnotize people. Okay, well, isn't that what you just did? Um, <laughs> that is a delight so, there, Adam. <laughs> yeah, it was gonna, it's like if Gary Oldman grew up like in, in, a, in a more working class section of the UK. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes my cockney slips out, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> Gavna? Real, oh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> we just lost all of the UK. They just all tuned in. So, so yeah, but no, the, yeah, the premise of this commercial is once again that, like, okay, you know, you're at, thanks for asking me for w how you should feel about this phone. Um, go ask the internet. I'm not going to tell you how to think. But actually, no, it's really cool. 
Like, right? That's the, the kind of subtext we're supposed to be taking here. And it's like, right. Right. I'm watching it again. It's in my, it's in my earphones right now. And like, don't listen to me. Internet listen users to me. can't be wrong. Yeah. Even if all the billions of internet users are still saying, four? Come on! I'm just a little let down. It feels like B-roll from the last series of ads. I mean, it's it like does, a month or two removed. It... What? Give me something more, HTC. Come on. Push this but, thing. Know, but you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and give props to Gary Oldman because that's like the best acting gig ever. No, like, yeah, it is. And, and, but he doesn't need it. Acting right? he like he loves the one in eight. <laughs> but, but the thing is, like, I wish that I, I I had more data on how these are on how these are landing because you know, um, the HTC press releases on the on the marketing are only going to focus on the positive. Obviously, the people who are already going to hate on the M8 in the comments for its you know perceived deficiencies are already going to say they suck. And I'm just confused. I'm stuck in the middle, like looking at them, going like, "Wow, I sure wish that this commercial." did more to tell me more about the device anything you know yeah right. uh, don't we, ask me to go ask somebody else why the device is great you uh, tell me why the device is great that's okay your that. job like, yeah but 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 i i understand the the desire not to have someone just there as a flack and just be like hey this is this hey this is gary oldman for htc and look at the one i made look at all the things it can do like that's boring i get the idea that you want to take a take a different stab at it but this commercial has so little, and the one before it, have so little time allocated to actually showing the device. I don't need to look at Gary Oldman for that long. I don't, I don't need to. I don't need that to get the tone of the commercial. You can do this while showing more of the phone, and while piquing curiosity about more elements of it, uh, with, sure. without this kind of direct to camera, strange weirdo, rainy night, dark room metronome stuff. Like it just, was the phone even in the commercial? Now I'm now I'm wondering. What hmm? was the phone even in yeah, the commercial? Yeah, it's in there. He's holding it. He interacts yeah. with it. Yeah. I'm just okay. getting this weird sense from these HTC ads where you know, it's in this and it was in that one Robert Downey Jr. spot for the M8 where they look right into the camera and they're like, I love this smartphone. And you don't believe a word of it. <laughs> you know, when, when other companies use celebrities in their advertising, I remember Apple did the Siri stuff. It's showing people using the phone, enjoying it. But I don't know if they actually you know, just tell us, we love this phone. This is the best smartphone. Go get it. I feel like HTC doesn't get how to use celebrities to their best effect. And I don't think celebrities can be used to, to any <laughs> real effect. I mean, we always complain about that, right? I, I always think that's kind of the wrong, the wrong thing to do. Um, because as much as, I, as much as I respect the need to relaunch a brand campaign and as much as I love Robert Downey Jr., like, I couldn't bring myself to like any of those spots. I was like, okay, this is weird. It's... Yes. Is it getting people talking? It's getting us talking. Is it getting people talking? I don't know. Is this airing on TV at all? Do you guys know? The Gary Oldman ad? Yeah. I mean, I've seen the the, the first one the first... a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I so. haven't seen one in forever, but I'm still watching DVR stuff from March, so don't go by what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, me too, but that's where I'm seeing all the old stuff, all the, oh. all the Gary Oldman ads. I, didn't know I, think I, saw, I think I yet? saw a uh, pre-2 commercial on uh, one of the shows that I was watching. <laughs> yeah. That's how far behind I am. Yeah. So I don't, I don't mean to, to crap all over this. It's just that it seems – comparing HTC to Samsung, which is what I like to do in terms of their advertising because that's – you know, that's the number one gulf between these these companies. And anytime we talk driving Samsung superiority, smartphone advertising, we have to bring up Samsung. Absolutely, right. and Samsung is actively getting better. You know, of course they were saturating the market before, and they're still taking that approach by rebranding an entire frickin' terminal at Heathrow for two weeks <laughs> with you know the Samsung Galaxy S5 terminal. Like what? It's oh, but you know that is. I don't know how effective that particular element of the approach is, but that's symptomatic of their entire approach, which is just to hit everything as hard as they can everywhere with a lot of money. Um, and the important thing to me is that Samsung's getting better in terms of the TV spots, the quality of the spots, and I think. Whereas HTC, well, I don't know if these are necessarily better than the old 1X parachute jumper ads. They're certainly different. I don't know if they're better. Yeah, if only we could get Gary Oldman up in an airplane. Mm. <laughs> Probably with a hipster with a hipster troll, perhaps. Perhaps. Is it just that I just don't? I don't know. Anyway, I, I think we should we should move on uh, to a different form of advertising in a second. But right now, we, we, Stephen, will you please tell us what the HTC One Remix is? Because this is actually kind of exciting to me. 
Yeah, well, it's looking like uh, Verizon might rebrand the One Mini 2 as the One Remix when it finally arrives later this summer. And we saw this One Remix name pop up. Uh, I think earlier this week, uh, EvLeaks uh, just offered the name, and that's it. And, of course, dr- drives wild speculation. You know, what the hell is this thing? Is this remix sounds kind of musical? Is this like the Harman Heyman Kadron? Harman Kadron. <laughs> sprint thing? Is this, you know, oh, we had no idea. So it'd be weird for Verizon to do this. Do we often see Verizon cook up new names for phones. I mean, there's, like, with the Motorola's, the droids, they get launched as a milestone internationally, but they're, you know, initially put forward like that. It's not often, I think, we hear about Verizon just cooking up a fresh name out of the blue for a phone that's already been announced. Yeah, well, so I, I'm not yeah. clear what they're thinking here. Yeah, I, no, I don't know. I feel like Verizon does that all the time. Like, they do it with, they did it with the yeah. droid DNA. They'll take those LG mid-rangers and rebadge them. Oh, yeah. You know, Verizon yeah. Vivid or some garbage. You know, it's like... Who came up with the uh, Icon name? Was that a Nokia thing or oh, was that oh, a Verizon God, yeah. thing? Icon, oh, you're absolutely you right. Yeah, that's, the Icon's that's the, the 930. Yeah. yeah. So I think Verizon's pretty pretty prolific but, in terms of re Okay, well, well, new complaint then. Okay. One Remix <laughs> sounds like it's going to be the One Prime or something. It sounds like a hardware refresh. A Remix is like you take the original and you mix it up a little, but it's generally it's improved. It's, you know, it's more danceable or something. This is, the, <laughs> this is smaller. It's less powerful. It's, I don't think they should have called it the One Remix. It's, people are going to be comparing it negatively to the M8. So, you know, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to disagree here. I think Remix is a pretty cool brand name for this because I'm not sure that people in, her, instantly associate Remix with, like, with, with better. I, th- I think that many people probably just look at Remix, uh, Remix and say, oh, that's different. And that's what this is. You know, it's a, it's a different it, – it, and it's a more compelling name than, like, the Mini – because I think, thanks to what we always complain well, that's about, that's because they've ruined what they've Mini ruined, means. Exactly, <laughs> the ru- Mini branding is absolutely in the trash because of yeah, the, the, <laughs> the way to fix that is by like releasing that. better Mini devices, not by calling them different well, things. I agree, but if the OEMs are not going to do that based on the data, mm-hmm. that they, and I always ask HTC about this, I always ask Samsung about this. I'm like, guys, you know, we have a lot of people asking for high-end mini phones and you guys keep putting out kind of mid-range mini phones and they're confident in their data that's all i can say like they well, it, they, they they and I, I don't know do we have any sales numbers that say they're wrong like are the minis just completely eating it i mean i gotta believe that they're right if these phones had the same kind of demand that we think they do they'd be making them these yeah. companies aren't fools they want to make money and I've also, i'm reminded of I've so that we don't the, the pressure comes from the carriers too as well by the way the uh-huh. carriers are asking for these and and yeah but go ahead what were you going to say uh, it's not on the rundown, but earlier this week, or maybe it was late last week, they all run together at this point. Um, there was uh, some comments made by one of the guys from a design team who'd been working on uh, Project Aura and the um, the endoskeletons, and he was saying that you know he's been showing people these different designs, and we've never been talking about the you know, the middle. There were three endo designs that uh, were released with the module development kit. There's a big one, a middle one, and this teeny tiny. It looks sort of you know uselessly small one, but apparently he has gotten this great uh, user response showing them this smaller one because these people see this as an opportunity to slide in the higher end modules to build a smaller phone that still has the specs of a flagship. Maybe this is the only way we're actually going to get this thing if the OEMs aren't making them. We can just build it ourselves. You know, hey, I, I'm not prepared to sit here and say you wrong. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I kind of like this brand name a little bit. I'm sorry. I know you were trying to make a larger point, and I <laughs> brought us back down. No, this, no this, I'm not this interested guy. in hearing your point, Stephen. <laughs> no, no it's, yeah. it's a good one. I'm sorry. I was momentarily distracted because it's... Just keep walking. Word. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, but Stephen, would you say that, or Adam, either one, would you say that one HTC One Remix is a better brand name than HTC One Mini 2? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I I think of Remix as in in Stevens thinking it's basically just a reshuffle of the same parts. So I don't see why I, I don't see a lesser device being a Remix. I see a lesser device being yeah. a lesser device. Hmm. And I, say, I see it being yeah. It's I it's mean, like if we want to stick with the musical terms, it's like the demo compared to the finished album. Oh yeah. Oh. Wow. HTC, HTC One, one Demo. Single. 
There you go. HTC Single. One B-side. Well, I like complaining about things. I also also think that One Mini Two is a lousy name. You gotta have well, the M8 yeah. in there. Yeah, One Mini Two is a pretty lousy name. One Mini Two M8. <laughs> I agree. No, just the One Mini M8 or the One M8 Mini, rather. Yeah, like that. I'm personally looking forward to buying an AT and T 4G LTE HTC One <laughs> at One Mini Two M8. Yeah, I forgot the Evo in there. That as as much anymore. Oh God, yeah. Um, Squared. <laughs> well, let's finish up our Android conversation talking about uh, another major manufacturer, one that's going to get a lot of spotlight time later in the month. Ooh. The LG. The LG. The one and the only. The G3. The G3 is coming out, and its laser has gotten a new explanation, a new possible explanation. One that's actually starting to make sense. Is Maybe. it strapped to the top of a shark's head? I still think nice. I still think this is not a. I think I think this is an IR port. I, no, I mean, it looks. IR. It's funny because the more we hear about the things this possibly could be, the more like you, the more convinced I'm becoming this is just a plain old IR transceiver. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but what, what's the latest thing? It's it's supposed to be what a, a focus assist laser. Yeah, like one of those things you have on a, a larger standalone point and shoot where it projects a little <laughs> pattern or something out onto the scene, and then by looking at the light coming back, it can focus better. Oh, which I've sort of makes those. sense. Yeah, when in, people with fancy cameras like they, they they take the shot and right before the shot, you've got that like red grid on stuff for the red diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are those the um, lasers? No, no, uh, traditionally uh, not. Uh, um, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Can I just get this out of the way? Yeah. All I want is a smartphone with a freaking laser beam <laughs> strapped to its head. Sorry. Oh. Okay, I'm done. You know, it's so I fresh. used an it's Austin Powers it. graphic for a post recently, and I don't think it was related to this. That was a, that was a mistake on my part. Oh. Oh. So it was for the billion download uh, Gmail app. That's what it was. <laughs> One oh. billion. A billion. Just can't do it. I think I'm going to cater all of my editorial ideas this weekend so I can use a header image of uh, Dr. Evil. I would appreciate oh, good. It's it important if, you, to, uh, if you didn't do that. Important to keep things topical. Yeah. That's a, yeah. to the current it's reference. It's very important to make all of our search result returns look like they're from 2002. That would be awesome. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, my work here is done. But I would say this laser, um, when we first heard the laser rumor, it, was, it wasn't described very clearly, uh, but it was specifically about improving performance in low light conditions. Now, I assumed that that meant some sort of illumination, but it also makes sense. It's hard to focus when you can't see the scene in the first place. I mean, the autofocus uses you know, parallax comparisons and whatnot. There's not a lot of you know, uh, photons coming into the lens in the first place. That's difficult. So it kind of makes sense that using a bright laser illuminator with this you know, grid pattern, whenever it projects to make the focus Adam, work. Adam, you're making the world shake. Low light. Stephen, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. This would focus would work faster in low light conditions, so it does fit with the first rumor. It's consistent, at least. Hmm. But I guess it doesn't look like it. It's small, and it, if it's black, then that would, you know, assume that the, the dark black plastic that we see for infrared windows is actually very dark red, and that means you need a infrared or a red beam, and those aren't the most efficient lasers and all this. It, like you said, I'm still leaning towards it being an infrared transceiver. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. Let's talk about the renders that came along with it. I mean, we're, you know... Oh, yeah, a bunch of these. I, I love that you updated the post 20 minutes after you posted it with, <laughs> seeing as it's been more than 10 minutes since the last G3 leak, of course there's a new one available. Uh, so this, these renders look really good. This phone continues to look better and better the more I see it on the hardware side. Uh, there's some texturing on the back-mounted volume keys, it looks like, along with a sort of, dis, uh, a, a, a subtle moiré on the power standby key in the middle of it. There's a two-tone flash, it looks like. We don't know if this is going to be a metal back, but it, it's probably in all likelihood going to be plastic that's yeah. detailed to look like metal, right? Like yeah. those uh, Samsung hyper, the last uh, days of hyperglaze. Or yeah, like the Ative, which the Ative family had a nice, had a nice uh, fake metal on it that actually looked really good. Then, then Samsung put hyperglaze on top of it, so it felt as slimy as ever, but it really looked like, it looked like real metal. I mean, it still does. I think the Ative SE still has that where it really does look like metal. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, that'll be something similar, maybe something that feels a little bit better, though. And then there's that chin that you don't like down below the screen, Stephen. But uh, you know, I'm going around to it. I like the look at the front of this thing. Oh, it's just so, so... That screen's so big. It really is, and it, it goes <laughs> edge to edge almost. There's almost no room in the top for the earpiece because the screen stretches up so far. And then down below you've got this chin that 
unless my eyes are deceiving me, looks like it too has some sort of subtle moiré pattern. I think if we had the full res, it wouldn't look quite so distorted like that. Oh, maybe. But yeah. oh, this yeah. is. Speaking of chins, this just reminded me of something I wanted to ask you guys. So I'm on Craigslist a little earlier today, yeah. looking around. I'm going to see what's being sold in the area, any uh, garage sales or anything. A guy five like miles away has a T-Mobile G1 for sale. He wants five bucks for it. Do I need this thing? Oh, you've got to get it. Yes. I think I have to get it. Jump on it's it. It's got a noble chin on it. Absolutely. It's got a great chin. I mean, I've got yeah. one that we bought for the throwback I mean, that you can just like have. But uh, you should spend five bucks to go get it. If you want to save that five bucks. Yeah, if you want but, <laughs> but if you want to feel the thrill of the deal, you should go get it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? That's what that's what appeals to me. Yeah. Well this thing just looks beautiful, this G three, and it's got this um this curved curvaceous construction with this really crafty, deceptive mid plate on it. When you look yeah. at it from the bottom on the side there, it like it gives the phone the impression of a galaxy round type construction, even though the that screen is not curved. Yeah, that's cool. Is it just me, or does that headphone jack look way too small? Though? That looks tiny. Is that what that's supposed to be, a headphone jack? That has to be, right? headphone jack. I don't know. Is that from the top or from the top? No, because that's from the... That well, is the I top. The bottom would have the USB. Oh, you're right. Well. I'm dumb. So that is the top. So wait, no, but no, 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 no. That's not what that is. That's a mm-hmm. noise-canceling mic and an, and an IR port. Oh, and if that's the IR port, then we're back to laser. Oh, it's and that's a much laser. better place for an IR port. Yes, it is. Interesting. You're right, because that can't be the bottom. I thought that was the bottom. That cannot be the bottom. It has to be the but top. It must be the bottom. Yeah. But <laughs> but it's too small for it. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, curious. At any rate, the speaker's still around the back, and that sucks. Uh, that doesn't suck as much as the um, as the software looks like it sucks. So this uh, render with the screen on that you used as the title image here, Stephen, is great because we're seeing this wonderful standby screen with this red and blue kind of smoke. And this thing that, each, that LG is putting in its renders, um, that it's like a circular clock widget. Yeah, yeah. That is really quite beautiful. I think that's gorgeous. But every time we see leaks of the software running underneath that lock screen, like the, the Optimus UI, the regular LG UI, I mean, yeah, it's been flattened. But tell me this thing doesn't look awful to you guys. <laughs> I, I voiced my... Did you not being so offended as you on another podcast? Oh, did we did talk not about this go over well? So oh. I am going to bite my tongue. Wait, oh, that didn't go over what? No, you didn't I, get, like I, shout it I down. I think it looks or fine. Is, I don't have any major objection to it. I have not interacted with it. I'm not experienced with we'll the see. UI on LG phones, so I, I, it doesn't look as bad to me as I think it does to you. All right. Well, I, I'm, then I'm gonna I'm going to withhold judgment as I always do until I actually see the thing in action. But I just hope these leaks are not are not right because already we've got these software things. No, no let's not withhold judgment. Fighting. I think we should start a review series of you know, judging books <laughs> judging. by their cover. Yeah, because we do a review just looking at the box of the smartphones. LG G3 render review. Yes, four thousand. I was gonna words. say the hands off the hands off impressions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not a bad idea for for uh, generating a very short, very intense spike of traffic for losing our entire audience forever. What it could be a video with like the MST three thousand. Yes, guys. yes, down in the bottom. Oh, that's a good idea, dude. Yeah, I like that. Hey, uh, whatever is going to happen with this actual release, I have to say that this is the best and most intense teaser I have ever ever encountered. In a world. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like the LG teaser for this phone is has got more sense and more intensity to its to its like music than any sci-fi movie, including Into Darkness, has ever been teased. And like you've got these jump shots, these these inserts of like dust dancing on the speaker, and like impact. <laughs> Inception since LG G3 brought to you by Skrillex. <laughs> I wonder if it's got the scratch, the scratch repair stuff that the uh, G Flex did. Uh, oh, because it uh, it looks like the back. same finish, doesn't it? N- no, no. The G Flex had a weird like. It was barely hairline. You you could barely see it. It kind of mm. just looked gray unless you were looking up real close. But right. that doesn't mean that. Hold up, though. That was just the detail underneath it. Like the thing that did the self healing with that top coating. Right. So that's a really good question, Adam. I wouldn't be surprised if they built that into here because that's one of their big set offs, you know? Yeah. They're the only OEM that's really doing that on smartphones in a big way. So. 
I just like the away. one part of the commercial that looks vaguely Borg with the with the lasers shooting out and uh, anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's lasers in the commercial? Could that be a teaser? No, it's like it's for the knock on decode thing. It's like oh, pop. Okay. It's like camera flashes on the screen. It's it's cool. Oh. I, yeah, I, I gotta say, I'm more excited for this than I ever was for the G2, just just based on the hardware alone. And that that teaser, listen. I have had a very stressful week, and when I watched that teaser in preparation for this podcast, I laughed out loud. And <laughs> not in derision, it was kind of like, it was kind of that unavoidable excitement, that excitement that you get kind of ashamed of when you're sitting in the movie theater and a, and a, and a preview goes up for a movie that is, you know, formulaic and whatever, but it's, it just looks so awesome that, you, you know, it's appealing to that part of you that is not controlled by your brain, and I don't... It has that. large things that go boom. Yeah, exa- exactly, right. It's, this is like... This this teaser is like the Michael Bay teaser of, of, of <laughs> smartphone commercials. It's the Fast Seven, Fast Furious, Sir Sevensers. Yeah. And you know it's yes. funny because it doesn't. There is a craft to that as well because I remember HTC uh, teasing the Droid DNA right before they unveiled it in New York with a very similar commercial because of course it's Droid and it's and it's a robot that's self assembling and it's also a fighter jet and it just shot somebody and it's like oh I'm so intense <laughs> and it didn't work. I'm sitting there like oh stop. You know, but this is really cool. I don't know. I like it. Go check out the teaser. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm kind of I'm kind of done with Android. You, um, Adam, would you like to take us into Windows Phone? I would love to take us into All Windows right. Phone. Is there a sound effect to go along with there that? There is. There is. I'm putting it in right now. In a world where there's already a ton of 8-inch tablets, Microsoft <laughs> brings us the Surface Mini. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. Good so I had to plug my own editorial there. So I like it. Uh, and what was but, your editorial uh, called? It's on the rundown. Uh, the editorial was called, Is Microsoft Too Late for the Surface Mini or something like that? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. the headline was not nearly as fun as my last editorial. I, thought, I love the alliteration, uh, the, alliter- uh, the alliterations in the headlines. The wearable watches we wish we wore. Oh, love that's that. such a good headline. <laughs> I really enjoyed that, and I didn't pimp it because I was ashamed that I didn't contribute. <laughs> I, I can't see I, that headline. The commenters the called you out on that too, brother. I know. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> I, I appreciate your trying to explain it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So uh, Microsoft is bringing the Surface. Well, the Surface Mini almost certainly, and it looks like the Surface Three as well, uh, yeah. which. Well, <laughs> maybe. I don't. I don't I think there's a whole lot of confirmation here. No. So, we saw yeah, so one I'm little mention of the name. Yeah, I mean, there's a. That's it. This is this may be the ultimate expression of Betridge's law. Like this is one of those headlines that asks a question <laughs> that the answer is almost certainly no. no. Why? Because it's too early, right? I mean, the Surface Pro two just just landed. It's yeah, crazy that was in, early. back in October. It was barely six months ago. Yeah, and but this is pro. I mean, yeah, the, <laughs> I I would be very surprised to see this happen. Yeah, so it's probably just going to be the Surface Mini. Whether or not it's going to run Pro Windows, you know, Windows 8 or Windows RT, we don't know. But there's a lot we don't know whether it's going to have a kickstand or not. Even though this image does have a kickstand, although that's probably pimping the Surface Pro 3. So if, I don't know. It's, it's a whole lot of speculation. If we didn't point. have this probable Surface Mini event coming up, I don't think anyone would be speculating about this find as anything other than a typo. Because yeah. there's nothing there. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> that, that said, I'm I'm not I'm fine with that because I think the Surface Pro Two is already doing a good a very good job as the Surface Pro yeah. did. Adam Lane loves his, and you know, and I say that knowing full well that Adam is going to probably love most things from Microsoft, but he's hmm. you know it's not that it's he's actually loves it because it's a very capable machine, and uh, it does everything he needs it to do and more. So I don't think the Surface Pro Two needs a replacement yet. However. I do think Microsoft needs to play in this in this um, mid-range tablet space. Now, Adam, oh, so why you, do you think they're they're too late? Well, it's just there's so already so much out there. There's you know there's I, I did an Amazon search as as part of the editorial, and it were, there were like of the nine results, there were like I want to say there were seven different manufacturers all making Windows eight. Eight-inch tablets, and uh, I mean, we had Toshiba, we had Asus, we had uh, Dell, we had HP. It's just there's so there's so many out there already. I'm just wondering if if the world really needs another eight-inch Windows, you know, Windows eight um, tablet, especially are since. There, and oh, go ahead. I'm are sorry. There, are there any with really good industrial design though? Well, you know what? I was, um, you know, one of the nice, one of the nice parts about my job, uh, my day job, is that you know we're we have a multi-platform product coming out, and so we have a bunch of 
devices you know we've got the nexus we've got a nexus 7 we've got uh, a couple we've got several different windows 8 machines um including the dell venue and i always forget if it's the dell venue pro 8 or the dell venue 8 pro it's one of the two okay. um it's the 8 inch windows it's, pro watch windows both exist and they're wildly different and that is a solid little piece of hardware i mean it i is. was i was tweeting about it earlier in the week and it's a great it's a great piece of hardware and it's good value and yeah, and it's like two hundred eleven dollars on Amazon, with and it's Prime, so you even get free shipping in two days. I mean, it's just it's an insanely good price, and I'm surprised I haven't actually bought one yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just it's a and it's a great piece of hardware. It it feels mildly adequate in the hand, um, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, uh, it's just it's it's it feels real good. It's not you know it, it's very very solidly built and it's very responsive and it's it's just a great little device and so i'm just wondering what microsoft really has to bring to the table um in this particular space i mean it, it is i think that that dell product is great in its own way yes but it's great in that way that's like okay we're going to be very inexpensive we're still going to deliver good quality at this inexpensive price point but we're not giving you the same kind of experience as you would get from a product called surface which and i'm just talking about hardware here so, mm-hmm. you know, for some people, I understand. Some people th- think that means, oh, so you're not giving me a, a tablet that's too heavy and too thick? Okay, great. But I've right. always liked the Surface design language, and I've always thought that it, using a Surface felt like using the future. Oh, yeah. I mean, I agree that the Surface is great hardware. It's just I don't know that Microsoft can compete with something like, you know, the Venue Pro. And, by the way, there is one thing that's that's worth mentioning. The, the Venue Pro 8 does not have an USB port, which I was a little disappointed to buy. But um, I don't know that any 8-inch tablet has a USB port off the top of my head. Wait, it should. But it's got a micro USB port, so can't you just It has a micro USB, micro yeah. Micro to micro and, and do an adapter that way? Uh, I guess. If, you want, to carry around, around, if you want to carry around yet another yeah. adapter. It's like the people in the comments who, like, when there's a comparison and you miss a detail, it's like, what about USB on the go? And I'm like, does anybody anybody use USB on the go? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. I I got to use that. We'll see. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what Microsoft will bring to the table. I just have to wonder. You know, history is not on Microsoft's side in this is how I concluded my editorial. It's just, you know, are they going to bring a great product at a competitive price? Eh, pick one. Um, so it's just I, I just I don't I don't I don't know what they're going to be able to contribute in, you know, in this space. That's just my view. I should point out this was my idea for the editorial, and I'm just happy we were able to develop it beyond what would really piss off the fanboys, because that may have yes. been where I started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stephen Stephen started off with a all out riot, and then I I waxed on some PR juice. So <laughs> we'll pull it back a little bit. I think that because you know these are these are valid questions to be asking. I'm sure that we will see – we'll have actually some fully formed opinions once we actually know what we're dealing with. Uh, sure. Just an update on last week's uh, news on this. We still are not officially going, guys. So, um, you know, if we have to, we'll report on it from afar. I've got to say I'm a little – I'm, you know, I'm a little pissed off. But, <laughs> uh, you know, hey, what are you going to do? I, it's in know. New York though, right? Yeah, which is where I've been living this month essentially. Yeah. I've been going to New York every like four days for something else. So it's like I'm – you know – Hey, uh, there's still some time. Uh, Windows Phone 8.1, first software update. Oh, yeah. 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 It's not even officially out, and we're already getting updates. All y'all bleeding edge developer preview boys. Which is pretty cool, because, yeah, I got it on my Lumia 1020. I got the alert, and it uh, it installed without incident. And I think Joe Belfiore is the one who went into some detail on what improvements this brings. Predominantly, it's battery life, isn't it? Yeah, that's the only feature that's been spelled out. I mean, little bug fixes behind the scenes, but you know, apparently users are reporting this does really impact their experience of the battery performance. I must tell you that I'm looking, I'm very much looking forward to uh, actually going back to Windows Phone um, whenever I can. But one of the absurd things about being a tech reviewer in the busy season is that you don't get to use your phone. <laughs> I plan to switch back to the Lumia 920 in about three weeks. Is that right? So- yeah, well, I'm 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 going on vacation to St. Louis with my family next week, and I still don't trust Microsoft Maps, especially in an environment that I've really only been to once 15 years ago. Sure. Um, so when it comes to like you know directions and where can I find a restaurant that isn't abandoned and on fire, um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm going to be using the Nexus Five through that trip. But then pretty much once I get back, 
um, probably going to switch back to the uh, to the to Windows Phone. Why don't you bring both, Adam? Because I've actually had a good. Oh, time. I'm taking both. Absolutely. Yeah, and I've had a good time. Yeah, like, proverbial cap and two phones. Yeah, and it, it is it is actually fun periodically, like in that really nerdy way when I'm not even working. I, mean, I don't even. I'm not even preparing a piece on it, but I'll be like, hey, I wonder how well like here Maps has improved in this area uh, in the six months since I've tried it. Why don't I swap into Windows Phone see how it is, and then you know sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not, but it's just right. fun to do. Should also be mentioned that part of the St. Louis trip is a mega, uh, geocaching mega event, and oh, totally. <laughs> and you need your Android geocaching. You app. need the Android, yeah. and it's uh, and I'm I'm hearkening back to November when I said, and I'll say it again, it's the stupidest reason in the world to pick a platform, but that's my reason. No, it's not. It, it's a, it's whatever. I mean, like it's a fun reason. Don't, yeah. Don't let anybody talk trash about geocaching. It's fun. It's, it's damn right. Fun. We should geocache together. We should. You should come out here and come to Beverly. Nah, you come here. Third uh, oldest cache in the world. I, ooh. I want to yeah, know... Yeah, now I got your attention. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I want to know more about this state, though. We, like, we, we have people receiving it because they're a developer early preview. We're all running the early thing. But, Stephen, when the F is 8.1 going to come to real hardware? In a matter of weeks. Ooh. Well, the updates uh, for the existing phones. That's yes. the... What Microsoft said back at the beginning of April, we haven't really been updated since then. But I think you're alluding to something else, and I should look at that. I think so. I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so isn't before... there some real hardware coming to shelves with 8.1 pre-installed? Yes, sir. Before the updates arrive for existing phones, we're going to see the arrival of the first phones with 8.1 from the get-go in the form of Lumia's latest uh, 6 series devices. The 630 is going up. For sale, I think today is uh, when really? it finally premieres in certain markets. Let me see. Um, uh, the, heard about yeah, the India? The gun posted May 4th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Available from today. So it was available as of Wednesday. Oh, okay. So Sales starting in Asia this week, followed by Europe and U.S. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So if you are in the right market, you can pick up a 630 for pretty darn cheap as of right now. And uh, I'm curious to learn if there is going to be an 8.1 update like there was for the developer preview that hits the 630 already. Because I haven't heard anything about that. Well, wait, wait. No, but it's shipping with 8.1, right? Right. But I'm saying if they're already updating the developer preview. There should be a Are corresponding oh, update. Actual update. Now, so. I bet that I bet that they early upgraded the uh, the 632 to so that. I mean, it's not awesome. much of a hiccup to yeah. to yeah. unbox a phone and then immediately do an update. Like we've seen that plenty of times. But yeah, yeah. right. Know. Either way, it's going to come with 8.1 out of the box. And if you out there are trying, struggling to remember what the hell the 6.30 is, because I can never remember. For some reason, I have this mental block. I can't remember 600 series Nokia phones at all. This one has a 4.5 inch LCD covered by Gorilla Glass 3, um, an 1830 milliamp hour battery, and a Snapdragon. What? I can't find what processor it has. Snap. And what resolution? Is it WVGA? I assume it's WVGA at these prices. Probably. Uh, Snapdragon processor is all they're saying, quad core. So it's probably the Snapdragon 400. Right. I sure wish that I could. Um, go to their frickin' specs page on this and read it. But anyway, yeah, it's, nice. it's, it's a big it's a big screen mid-range phone, right? And what's the yeah. uh, camera resolution? Do we know? Mm-hmm. We don't know right now, but we could mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. It's dual SIM, which is fun. And I wish I was on the right page for this. I'm not. <laughs> Lumia 630. Here's the While we're looking for that. Here. I've got it, yeah. Okay. Uh, more product information, specifications. Display size 4.5, yeah, FWVGA, 854 by 480 is that weirdo resolution. 5 megapixel camera, there it is. 9.2 millimeters thick. How many grams? We don't know. No. Snapdragon 4. I thought you could, confirmed. you said you're really good at uh, guesstimating grams at this point. Yeah, I'm pretty good. 134, what do you think? by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I just guess 145 is a good, it's around 145 ish. You know, I gotta say, this thing doesn't look as good as I thought it would look. Oh, are those on screen buttons? Yeah, they are. Yeah, 8.1, baby. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but 8. yeah. Point, yeah, but I've only run it. Yeah, this is when we first saw them. Hardware. We oh, saw them really? um, back in December, leaked screenshots for the 630, where our first confirmation of those on the screen buttons. This is, listeners, this is a cautionary tale. If you ever start a podcast, have your pages preloaded, because otherwise <laughs> your, your entire pacing, everything just goes out the window as you wait for pages to load. Anyway, While you're yeah. s- streaming on Skype with two other people, and yeah, yeah who could have seen that coming? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what were you, were you going to say something about this, Adam? 
I was just I, well, while we were talking about the OTA update for 8.1, I just I just had this mental image of like uh, a server with the 8.1, like counting the number of OTA uploads. And it's like it's you know, it's like, all right, we're going to release it now. And it goes like six and just stops because everybody else has already updated. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, now. Yes. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Stupid. Stupid no, story. No worries. Actually, we're at the we're at the end of our uh, of our rundown, and I'm just checking for breaking news to hit up. What about the listener mail, Michael? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, listeners, there's a uh, there's a nice animated GIF of uh, Louis C.K. <sighs> saying "nope" in our thing, and it is GIF, Stephen. You shut up. <laughs> I didn't mean it. You can talk. <laughs> <laughs> can we just say GIF GIF from now on? GIF GIF. Yeah, actually, uh, Stephen, you make a good guy. Guys, you, want, you want to stick around for ten minutes and just do a just do three or four pieces of listener mail because we're actually a little ahead of schedule. <laughs> Stephen, if you want to go, you can go. Like, no, 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 no. Why don't Wait, you just go? How are you... we ahead of schedule? Hold on, you have listener mail kicking in an hour and six in. <laughs> it's not an hour and six; it's an hour and twenty. You're totally oh, making it, those times up in the rundown. In the rundown. Oh no, those time codes are always from the previous week. Uh, I was going to wonder, how do you guesstimate with such precision? Oh, no, I don't do that. No, 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 no. Just copy, paste, sucker. All right, don't worry. I'll read them. I'll read them. Um, so we've got a couple here. Uh, let's do the bong bong. Listener mail. Bong bong. Good times. Hey, Pocket Now team. This is from Greg Vote. And this is about the BlackBerry Z3. I figured we changed it up a little, guys. We talked about all the other platforms. Let's talk about BlackBerry a little bit. hey uh, BlackBerry releasing their new budget BlackBerry 10 smartphone, the Z3, in Indonesia yeah, this week. Uh, edition, yeah. With a sub, uh, yeah, Jakarta edition, right? Mm -hmm. With a sub $200 price tag. How do you think this phone will stack up against other mid-range phones, such as the Moto G and the Lumia 820? Uh, also, do you believe the new budget BlackBerry 10 phones will allow BlackBerry to increase sales and market share like the Lumia 800 series did for Windows Phone? Sincerely, Greg Vote. Good question, Greg. I like this. And, um, you know, Adam, Stephen, jump in here. What, what do you guys think? We've been talking about low-cost phones this podcast. We've probably got our brains in the right gear, yeah? Uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of looking over the specifications because I... Really, I, I've kind of tuned out BlackBerry news. I'm sorry, but oh, there hasn't uh, been a lot of it. To be fair, there really hasn't. Yeah. So, uh, what are we looking at here? Like in terms of specifications, does anybody know off the top of their heads? The BB Z3. Now, bring it up. I'm, I'm yeah. doing a uh, I'm doing a tab on listener mail, and I'm putting the time code down. So I'm slightly busy at the moment. Uh, we yeah. don't know much about this. We don't have a review unit. To be honest, we haven't aggressively pursued it because it's not really in um, in the market that we're predominantly in guys all right here we go z3 specs via phone arena whenever you're uh, go ahead steven sorry it's not cheap enough it's selling um works out to like around 200 dollars. i mean when you're competing at for the lower end you're going against the 520 the yeah. uh, moto e you have to work against these much more affordable devices in this and the specs i mean uh it's this quarter hd yeah, it's not got, a uh, very quarter hd at what it's size a, it's a five inch phone five uh inch? the resolution is five uh, 540 by 960 for yeah, 220 ppi right. uh it's a five megapixel camera with autofocus it's like uh, a mid-ranger from last year and yeah front-facing camera 1.1 uh system memory is 1.5 wait one point Five gig of RAM, yeah, okay. Uh, Snapdragon eight hundred, so that's not bad. Dual Snap core, that's not bad. Uh, no. Built dual, in no, 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 no. is dual core. What? It's a dual core. Uh, Twelve, uh, one point two mega, uh, one point two gigahertz. Then, um, so it's not the eight hundred, is it? No, no it's, it's an eighty two thirty. Okay. Which oh, eighty two thirty. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Call Snapdragon four hundred. Plus is S four plus. Oh, it's S four oh. plus. Really? Okay. Well, phone arena is wrong then. Uh, okay, oh, and we've got eight gig of uh, built in storage, uh, micro SD up to thirty two. Okay. Um, battery twenty five hundred milliamp so hours. This doesn't seem like all that bad a but device. But it's you're getting still your money here. BlackBerry though, so you're not getting yeah. the apps right. and all the stuff right. that the people but, like. But, but what market is this for? This is for Indonesia, which has a very strong presence in BlackBerry, right? So, it, it was, well, so does Canada, but that didn't help them. <laughs> well, I'm not saying. I, I think the question is: Is this when you're looking at the low end? Of course, your your options are more limited, right? And you've got for a while now, you've had the Windows Phone offerings in the Lumia 52X series. Now you're starting to get the Moto E alongside the Moto G, which is prohibitively expensive and the supremely low end. 
and now you have mm -hmm. the BlackBerry. So I guess the thing, I, I, I don't think that the BlackBerry platform would be too much of a handicap when people are shopping for phones at a certain price point that's very low. They expect to have limited options. But I think what you guys were saying before is a lot more valid. This is too expensive, right? Yeah, it's, what, 200 bucks, And there's, there's I can already think of three phones I would rather have off the top of my head for less money. And, Bingo. and you know, the five, hell, the 520 is one quarter of that. So although I don't – granted, we prices don't necessarily carry over to overseas markets. So, you know, the Lumia 520 could be 50 bucks here. It could be, you know, $700 over in, you know, wherever. So right, I've exactly. seen that happen. You should make that point too. Yeah, the, um, the, those conversations are uh, prevalent in our – coverage of the Moto E, by the way, because there's right. a lot of people, you, you visit the Motorola site from different parts of the world, you get different prices based on your local market. So, Anytime right. I talk about a phone or some manufacturer trying to release a phone with a Nexus level price tag, uh, half the comments <laughs> are, no, Nexus phones are crazy expensive. Like, well, right. maybe for you, but like, give me a break. Over the place. It is crazy. Right. It is this right. is a big world, and there's a lot of different places in it. So. Amen. But we're, so going off the assumption that that price is representative of what it's going to be, then it's too expensive. But if the competing, you know, the competing phones like the Moto G and the Lumia 520 and whatnot, if they are all similarly inflated, then it's got a shot. But it's still BlackBerry, hmm. which I mean, God, what four years ago that would have been an awesome thing. I was like, hey, it's BlackBerry. Now it's like right. it's BlackBerry. But you um, know, it, 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 I still think BBM is is pretty big in Indonesia. I still think like being in on that network is big because you have. So but you can get that on Android now. Right, but uh, there are still some advantages, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And listeners, please write in if you're an Indonesian resident and I'm wrong on this. But I still think there are ways of getting cheaper monthly bills by using BlackBerry's offerings um, rather than using raw data. Like there, there's some kind of billing difference that used okay. to be serviced by BlackBerry Internet Service back in the day. And I don't, know. I don't know if that's still the case, but I remember you could save a lot of money if you used a BlackBerry in some of these markets because you wouldn't be billed SMS rates, which are crazy expensive uh -huh. for messaging. Yeah, so that okay. may be the thing. So maybe that that's – I, I you know, for some people, if you do the, the, the yearly calculation, if, if you're saving enough on monthly bills, then, yeah, you'll pay a little bit more for a device up front if it's going to make, make those savings happen for you. And if that's the case, then this BlackBerry makes a lot of sense. If not, then – well, and – I can't imagine that they didn't take that into account when they decided where to launch the thing, for God's sake. So, I don't know. We don't have enough to sufficiently answer that question, but I think we've uh, tossed around enough speculation that, uh, you know, we, we're at least 15% right. <laughs> yeah. Good. And, you know, 15% is, you that's, know, the, the new uh, it's a new 80%. That's right. Yeah. You know, 72% of statistics are all made up. That's right. <laughs> Common core, buddy. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Hey, this one's from PPO Mares. PPO Mars. PPO Mares. Anyway, it's not signed. I just have the email address to go on, so there we go. All right. I like this question, though. We all know how much Samsung is being criticized about their flagship's battery cover material choice, the email says. I don't really understand why, being a removable cover, they don't offer different backing options, just as they currently do with colors. People would be able to buy a plastic, leather, or metal S5 for the same price and change it as they please afterwards. What's your opinion about this matter? I'd love to have the, this question read in the weekly. Thank you. Sent from Samsung Mobile. Wish granted. What do you mean? He wants to have the email read on the weekly. Oh, that uh, part. Oh. Yeah, but I was yeah. like, wait a minute. What did they get? <laughs> Come on, man. No, God, sorry. I sorry. So. I, should, I should clarify my vague comments. Um no, it's, it's it's an interesting point, but I just I don't know that there would necessarily be that much of a market for it. Oh, come I mean, on. Come on. Well, uh, at, I mean, look at Moto Maker. I mean, I don't know. You know, the Moto X didn't necessarily sell as well as they wanted to, but the Moto G is their best-selling device in history, and you can customize that one. I think Samsung, though, is very protective when it comes to its designs. Um, if that's like with true, the Galaxy that's S5. We, you know, we're all looking at the... You know, the <laughs> Band-Aid looking back. I'm like, what is Samsung thinking here? Samsung must have felt incredibly strong about that to go forward with the design. I mean, it, you know it's going to – the sort of money it has, it's going to test market these things. It's going to get focus groups. It's going to hear these complaints. It went forward with that nonetheless. It believes in what it's doing. And as such, I, I think giving that sort of control over to users and, and all of its official accessories, all the, the add-on, you know, the wireless charging and the, the flip covers, they all match with the same design language. Letting the end users mix this up, I don't think it could bring itself to give up that sort of control over how its phones look. I mean, you can't control aftermarket 
cases and whatnot. But I, I think right. it's going to do what it can to deliver a consistent look and feel for each particular model. It's our crappy Good design, point. and we're not going to let you ruin it. <laughs> right. Kind of, yeah. Gotcha. I mean, yeah. It belongs to them. I, you know, okay. I, I don't think you're wrong on that. I, 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 as much as I really kind of don't like Samsung's industrial design for its uh, for its more recent handsets, I, I think you're you've got a point. You know, just because it's uh, it's being widely debated across the internet doesn't mean that it's not working out for them. They're selling they sold 11 million units a month, so yeah. I mean, I guess it is strange that Samsung seems to be leaving a market on the table. Which is definitely not what Samsung does. Right. That's the thing, because they have the ability to do this. I mean, if Motorola can set up a a factory that that builds custom phones, surely Samsung can release a line of designer bags. And they have partnered. I should say that Samsung has partnered with designers to release. Yeah, we get those, like, crystal ones and stuff. Yeah, the Swarovski thing. But also, like, those designers whose names I don't remember because I'm not a fashion follower. But when the Note 3 was released, they had a bunch of cases that were like, hey, this we partnered with. You know, yeah, but it's always clear these are, the, these are the exceptions. These are the special devices. They're not you know, opening the floodgates in any sense of the word. Yes. No, that's true. And I, right. I, it would be – yeah, I would like to see this. I think this is a very good idea and I wish, I wish we could see it. But uh, – well, I wish I was a little bit taller. Do you wish you were a baller? Mm-hmm. I wish I was thinner. <laughs> see, you ruined it. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't realize where you were going with that until you said baller, and by then I had already decided I was going to say it. And once I decided something, I got to say it, and that's what's gotten me in trouble all my life. <laughs> uh, inside baseball here. This is from Justin E. It's asking a question about why we do multiple device reviews. Hello, Pocket Now team. First of all, love the work you're doing and keep it up. Thanks, Justin. My question: Just wondering, why is there a review on the same device, just a different carrier? For example, the HTC One M8. There was your first review, and I think it was Taylor did one for a Verizon model. Is there that much difference between carriers? Thank you again, Justin Eads from Arizona. This is a very valid question. I was kind of wondering it myself, actually. Me too. Yeah. So, <laughs> in the the reason is uh, it, it multifaceted, and part of it is is uh, for lack of a better word, habit. Back in the days when carriers had a lot more say in how they modified their devices. The phones could actually have quite significant differences across carriers. Mm. Uh, we remember this from, you know, as recently as like three or four years ago this was happening. Now that um, manufacturers have started demanding that the device be the same across all carriers, there, there are quite a few fewer differences. In fact, the hardware is very often the same. But you still have differences in terms of software bloat. Uh, some of these additions from the carriers do <laughs> of what do affect performance? What? Uh, just, let's let's just do another review and just talk about all the extra crap that the, that this different well, carrier yeah, put on. We That's... could have just like an update and you know, tacked on three paragraphs. This is how the bloat is different. But I mean, when we have different reviewers look at these devices, we also get a whole other viewpoint on the phone itself. And you know, we all have our likes and yeah. dislikes here, so you get a different opinion on the. Uh, device as well. It's kind of exactly like an extension right. of the first review. That's Should it. also be pointed exactly out that right. yeah. the uh, LG G2, didn't that have a pretty significant Big difference, difference uh, on hardware Verizon. Um, yeah. on Verizon? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it did. They changed the buttons. They changed a bunch of stuff on it. Uh-huh. So there's that as well. And, and also, um, you know, that's why we do review rebuttals. When we don't have carrier variants or we can't get them for some reason, we'll send the same device to another team member to be like, hey, we reviewed this. Uh, yes, you had input on the first review, but look at it from your own perspective. And if you agree, say you agree. If you disagree, say why you disagree. And it's right. just a matter of giving different perspectives. Um, the, carry, the different carrier variants help us do that. Although, you know, as these phones become more and more homogenous across carriers and as carriers against their, <laughs> against their wishes become dumb pipes, um, maybe we'll look at this and, and decide to go a different route on it. But yeah, all these things combine to make that a different thing. And, you know, network performance. I shouldn't have to say it, but of course, network performance oh, yeah, affects yeah. everything. And yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, so I, I think we, uh, we basically are just doing our best to, to cover everything as thoroughly as possible. So that's. I think it also makes sense if you do uh, an initial review with like an overseas model and then we get like an American variant, then that, that actually oh, makes that, a lot of sense. Oh. Yeah. And that's a reason too, because sometimes we can get the overseas version or the global, quote unquote, global version first. And it doesn't come to American carriers until weeks later. And then it's just a question of competing guys in this, you know, in, in the publication sense. Because 
frankly, you know, we can't always be sitting here waiting for a carrier variant to come to us for four weeks while everyone else has a review out. That doesn't make very much sense from a business perspective. And also, I don't like sitting here watching everybody else give their opinion and sitting here reading a review and saying, I agree or I disagree. Like, no, I want to be in the conversation. So that's sure. why we do this. And if that results in multiple reviews, well, hey, you know, that's an okay yeah. sacrifice to make, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll never take me alive, Captain. <laughs> okay, final piece of listener mail from Frank R60. Uh, Frank NYC is how he signs it. Hi, team. Thanks for all the great content. Thanks, Frank. It seems Motorola has carved out a niche for inexpensive mid-range phones. No doubt. Will we ever see true high-end Motorola phones again? Something that Ooh. competes with the GS5 and HTC One. Thanks as always for a great podcast, Frank NYC. Thanks for a great question. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, think, that's, I have my answer to this. I think absolutely. That's got a lot you, of sexy attached to it. Yeah. What do you guys think? What do you think, Adam? Uh, I, I don't think that's the way my, uh, Motorola wants to go. I think that they've really worked hard over the last year to show we don't need to put out really high-end devices to give you a great experience, uh, which it doesn't mean it, it'll never happen, but I just don't think that that's where they're focused right now. I think they're really focused on optimizing software and hardware to live interchange or in 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 a symbiotic circle in as they would say harmony, harmony if you will, you will. yeah <laughs> Jesus, Michael. Wow, Steven. <laughs> you and I are hanging out too much uh. <laughs> so i mean i i just think i mean just based on what they've done that just seems to be where they where their sights are set so i could be wrong steven do you agree disagree yeah, there's what did we hear recently i feel like there was a leak about some motorola hardware that looked like this it was very high end it had i don't know, like 1080p screen and stuff that we wouldn't expect from these moto x style devices and we wondered if it might be this x plus one that we're hearing will come out like later <laughs> in the summer i, I kind of like what motorola is doing now just fine i mean i don't think it would hurt them to add some higher tier uh, offerings but Price and value, value more than anything, I think is driving Motorola sales at the moment. It still could be able to sell a, a higher end phone without a crazy high price, like a you know 450 model or something. But I, I, if it doesn't do that, I don't think it's going to be doing itself any disservice. I think it, its place in the market right now is it's having great success, and it's not seeing a lot of other strong competitors there. I mean, we have cheaper Android phones, certainly, but few from manufacturers with the sort of uh, gravitas as Motorola, yeah. especially in the West. And I, I, it can keep on doing what it's doing here, and it's not going to... I ran out of thoughts there. It's not yeah. going to be a bad it's, thing. Well, yeah. and, it's, and it's not a bad thing because, you know, the Moto G, I'll say it again, I said it earlier, but it, it hit me in the face that this is the, the truth. It is their best-selling smartphone ever. Ever. You know, they're, they're selling the thing in over 100 and something, 20 countries or something. They're, they've got like 70-something percent year-over-year -year growth in one particular metric that I forgot. But, like, it's a big success story for them, and it's a really low-end device. So I think that, yeah, Frank, you're right. They've carved out a nice niche for themselves. But I don't think that means that they have lost interest in servicing the higher end. I think the Moto X didn't land as well as they wanted it to, frankly. And um, mm. it, the Lenovo acquisition is going to muddy all these waters. Maybe we'll see something entirely different in a year from now. But I think that if they can apply the lessons they learned from the Moto X launch appropriately to a device that with the X plus one or whatever it's going to be called, that doesn't go too far in the way of those flagship specs because that's not where they su succeed. You know, I, I, but I don't think those would ruin anything as long as it, you know, the margins are low enough that it's still selling a thing affordably. It's not that the right. Moto X succeeded because of its less than flagship specs. It succeeded because of the, the price and the value you got for them. So that's true. So if you want to have it both ways, then yeah. It, it, but... I, I don't know. I think it's really hard to do. I think when you're putting that that many specs in a phone, um, that your marketing department wants to be like, let us go brag about this. This is awesome. But that's not the message, I don't think, that Motorola wants to send with any X-level device. And it's not one they should send, I don't think. You know, because I was just looking at the After the Buzz for the Moto X that I did um, 
this morning because somebody was asking me about an iPhone alternative. I was like, well, it's a little late to buy one, but you might look at the Moto X. And I looked at our conclusions on the ATB, and I just started actively missing my Moto X that I want to use again because it's such a good product. And so I think that if Motorola can somehow marry that with specs that that will get the nerds on the internet excited enough to talk mm -hmm. about the thing in a, in a complimentary fashion rather than a dismissive one and price it properly, then yeah, I don't know. Who knows? But I do think that there is a future in this. I don't think that they're just going to abandon this because they had some success with the Moto G and they're like, well, we're going to be low end forever, you know, particularly not with <laughs> Lenovo wanting to make a name for itself in North America with smartphones. That's what I think. I think, okay. and I also think that those are enough thoughts. For all of us. I think those are oh, the thoughts. I do have one mail I would like to address because it was oh, really? specifically to me here. Oh, you actually got into the inbox. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, well, then, yeah, freaking read it, brother. Okay, we have Ganesh yeah. from India, who I assume is the same Ganesh as Joe was addressing with, uh, with his uh, editorial there, who uh, asks uh, for me, wants to know how things are going between me and Rithvik. <laughs> and if there's any budding rivalry between <laughs> this new competition, and wants to know how we decide who covers what so as to avoid mix-ups. Hmm. Uh, no, there's no rivalry. Rithvik is the awesome new addition to our team here, who's been doing the uh, new shift in the evenings and overnight here. He's out on the west coast of the U.S., so we're not really fighting over the news at all. I end things up uh, in the evening here on the East Coast, and I just hand the reins over to him. And he picks up from there, covers the – because there's still you know, all these companies out west. Microsoft and Apple might be releasing news later in the day yeah. and stuff over the Tony night. So it's, it's a well-oiled machine here. We're all covering the news different times. There's no conflict here. Just enjoying each other's presence and seeing what we can do. Just seeing what we can all do See what together. We can do. Which completely flies in the face of what I wanted to do, which was to have both Stephen and Rithvik write up the same piece, and then we'll all vote on it. Yes, that's what we have to do. <laughs> By the time the news gets out, it's four hours later, and it's cold. Yes. yes. So, wow. Rejected. This is great stuff. Uh, yeah, thank you for that, Stephen. I actually saw that. I was going to save that for, uh, for another one, but I'm really glad that you, uh, you brought it up now, because it's nice to close on a little bit of little bit of peek behind the curtain, if you will. Yeah. Insider info. But... Guys, with Park that, insider. I, uh, I've started doing the podcast while not plugged in, and I'm down to 5% of my battery, so I think we should Why close this up. do that? This happens every time. Well, it's a self-imposed deadline, because otherwise I'll talk all <laughs> afternoon, and then I have to have <laughs> yeah. a longer show, and next thing you know, I'm working the weekend again, like always happens. So. Yeah, that's what I told my wife. We say it's going to be an hour, we plan for an hour and a half, and it ends up being two. There you go. This is What, what are you and your exactly wife doing right. for two hours? No, you're talking about the podcast, right? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, podcast. That. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> totally. And with that bit of humor, I want to thank both of you for, for coming out for this Friday afternoon edition. Appreciate it. It was awesome. It was awesome. It's always awesome. And, and I'm just glad I didn't suck like I did on the last podcast. Man, I went back and listened to that and it was <laughs> horrible. Suck on the last it was horrible. Yeah. Man, you guys were the suckiest bunch of sucks that ever sucked. Jeez, this whole thing sucks. Now, I hope that you both have an outstanding weekend, whether it's geocaching or, uh, or, or in the case of Steven, doing that secret thing he does when he turns off his work email and disappears. Buying seven-year-old T-Mobile. <laughs> yeah, buying, <laughs> buying G1s from Craigslist and testing them in the local mall. That's what Just we, remember, when you have that $5 on you, make sure you meet in a public place. Otherwise, oh, yeah, you I don't want to get ripped off. Yeah, don't be going to nobody, <laughs> no Craigslist house. No, I'm going in eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of the Pocket Now Weekly. Listeners, thank you so much for joining us. And again, thank you for all your listener mail every week. We do love it. Even if we don't get to pieces on the air, we read every one. Podcast at pocketnow.com. Also, be sure to find us on Twitter. Uh, Adam is Dead Technology. Stephen is at Stephen Shank. And I am at Captain Two Phones. You can also follow Pocket Now officially at Pocket Now on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Google. And if you enjoy the podcast, we hope you do. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Xbox Music, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts are heard. We really do appreciate those good reviews we keep on reading. So thank you. And thank you again for listening. You're the best audience a podcaster could ask for, for real. And we'll be back with more Mobile Tech Talk next week. For reels on the wheels. ba da ba No listener mail. Did you like my GIF? That was G no, GIF. No. You son of a bitch. It's GIF. Get it?
It's Jeff. According yeah. to the official maker of the word, it is Jeff. Yeah, you know, and he's officially wrong about it. They just had this discussion on Twitter last week, and I like I listened to it for ten minutes. I'm like, wow, didn't I hear this like a year ago? It's I Jeff. I still don't care with it. Yeah, it's not peanut butter. <laughs> that that was also said on the other show. This well, is amazing. 